Mrs. Hopkins say when you told her you were moving out? I haven't told her yet. But I'll find the time. Don't worry, Richard. Will you believe he won't even let me help with those dishes? No, I know. It won't take but a minute. You go on. I know you ladies got shopping to do. Well, uh, Ethan, it was very nice meeting you. You want to know something? I feel as if I've known you for years and years. Come on, Becky. Now, Richard, and I will be seeing you. And don't worry, I'm not going to let Becky spend all her hard-earned money. Excuse me. <laughs> Do you have 
for school. Pat, look, the reason why I wanted to have this lunch with you was to ask you to think about something very seriously. What? I think it's time for the three of us to leave Landview. The three of us? Brian and you and I.
to break down. And that's basically what I want to know is, how much is she improved? I mean, can I believe what she tells me? Well, of course, I'm over with you all I can, have, but you know that I have to keep the details. It can't be denied. It's confidential. Yeah, I'm not up to her in detail. I just want to know how well she is. I mean, can I believe her? She's a very honest woman. The truth is, she certainly would never tell you anything that she didn't really believe.
might be the source of her, her anguish. I can't help thinking that maybe she wouldn't want me there. I can sort of understand that, but... For what? Uh, I don't know exactly how to say this, because I'm not sure how you're going to take it. But I need you to walk in that chapel with me. For appearance's sake? No! I knew it. I knew you were going to take it that way. Listen, Jenny, I happen to need you all the time. Tomorrow is going to be especially difficult. I'm going to need all the love and support that I can get, not the appearance of you on my arm. But the cat home. Grant stopped seeing Lana a long time ago. I don't know exactly when it was, but I know that it was a long time before his engagement to Jenny. I'm sure of that. All right, all right. Let's get back to the night Lana died. You saw Brad that night, right? Yes. Um, I had stopped by Jenny for a few minutes uh, after I got to the movies, just to visit her. And, um, well, then I came home and, and Brad was here. What, what time was that? Uh, about 11 o'clock. Maybe it was a little bit before. But he was waiting for my father, but my father had gone out. So we just sat around and uh, talked, and uh, after a while, he decided to go home. But before he, he, he left, he wrote a letter, um, well, it was actually an invitation, inviting my father to the wedding. And what time did he leave? Uh, 11.30. But he didn't go home. He, he went over to Jenny's. I guess he, he kind of had this wild impulse all of a sudden, and he went over to see her. And then, I guess he must have gotten hungry or something, because he came back here, and, um, well, it was about, um, 12 o'clock, or maybe a little after, and we talked a little more, and then, and then we went out to the diner to get something to eat. You know the name of the diner? A the Empire Diner. I can tell you what the waitress looks like. Oh? You go there often? Um, once or twice. But you remember what the waitress looks like? Yes. <clears throat> well, I have trouble remembering what a waitress looks like two minutes after she served me. Unless I go there often. Well, I guess I'm just a little different in that way. I guess I just I remember faces very easily. So, what she look like? Oh, uh, she was blonde. Kind of tall, I guess five, six. Um, slim. And she was about... Well, I'd say that describes a lot of waitresses in Lambview. I guess you're right. Let's get back to Lana. Did Brad ever give her any kind of, uh, gift? No. You sure, Sam? Well, oh, I guess, well, he call it a gift. He, he did, like, Lana join the health club for free, but, but, you know, that's it. Actually, he, he tried to keep her out of his office and away from him, but she just kept coming. And, and, and uh, one day, it was a couple weeks ago, he got really mad at her. And then she came over here, and, um, she wanted me to deliver a letter from her to him, because she didn't want to deliver it. Did you read the letter? No, no, no. I, I gave it to Brad. I mean, I, I was there when he opened it, but <laughs> he seemed a little bit upset by it. I guess because uh, she didn't want to accept the reality that he he loved Jenny and not her. Did Brad ever discuss uh, with your father the matter? No. Why? Should he have? Well, I don't know if you have a woman obsessed with you and as freaked out as Brad says Lana was. And your father's a psychiatrist. I mean, wouldn't you have some advice on how to handle it? Well, you see, they hadn't been on speaking terms for a long time. And that was the reason that Brad was over here that night. She kind of buried a hatchet the night before the wedding. But no, no, he did not discuss Lana with my father. Nice. Samantha, I'm going to ask you a very uh, subjective question. What do you really feel about your brother? I, I, I love him. I, I know what you think. 
be touched by Lana in her life. I, I was very close to Lana once, and I, I think that in some ways I, I probably know her better than anybody else here. Uh, what Kathy said about her vulnerability is, is true, but she was also very lonely, and she reached out to other people to try to get them to like her, to care for her. She was very easily hurt and confused when not everyone felt about her the way she wanted them to. Still, so she, she never stopped trying to win affection, to, to make herself a better person. When she reached what turned out to be the last stage of her life, when she was so caught up in fantasies, I just, I wish I could have done more. I, I feel so ashamed that I did. I guess that's why I'm up here now, because I... Thank you. 